Okay, well, we're trying for the fourth time. I'm really having technical difficulties today, but that's okay. Everything's going to be fine. Uh, I'm Paul Fawcett with Grace Ministries, and we're coming to you with another session of family support. Uh, today is August 4th, 2023, and I just want to say what a blessing it is for me to have this opportunity to come before you. Today, I want to talk with you about a subject that crosses someone's mind a number of times that has someone suffering with addiction, and that is wanting to give up. Sometimes it's the devil that's trying to convince us to give up. Sometimes it's our own self feeling like that we're hopeless and, and time is just drawing near and, and we just can't deal with this anymore. But I want you to understand that with Jesus Christ, there is always hope. At least hope for ourselves, if nothing else. Let's open with a quick word of prayer. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for this opportunity to come before this group today. I pray that you will place the words into my mouth that will be a beneficial to someone that is on the other end. Lord, I just ask you to use this to serve your will and to let someone know that they don't need to give up because there is hope. For this I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, tonight I'm making a presentation to Christ Alone here at Grace Ministries. Uh, about a new ministry that we would like to endeavor in, and that is called Grace's Angels. And this is a program uh, that would be under the umbrella of Grace Ministries, but we would like to start working, trying to send people out for rehab services. And that, that would be what I call an inpatient or a resident type service. Uh, there's a place and there's multiple places out there, but there's one place that we would like to start this with, and that's Hope Center Ministries, which has about three places in North Carolina, two male and one female. And then they also have, uh, well, they have places in pretty much every all 50 states. Um, so our goal would be, oh, I'm setting a goal that within the first 12 months, we want to be able to reach out and help 36 people. That's three a month, and with the plan that I think we have that God has given to me, I think it's very obtainable. You see, we have a drug problem in this world. We have a drug problem in the state of North Carolina. We have a drug problem in Vance County. It is a problem all over. This problem is not going to get fixed by just one church or one person trying to fix it. It's going to take a combined effort of all. And that's kind of what this plan outlines. If we could just get 20, I believe it's 24, uh, no, 21. If we could get 21 uh, churches or organizations to just give $100 a month at $700 cost, we could send 36 people to rehab in a 12-month period. And I may not be thinking about my math exactly right, so just, just know that's what the goal is. My heart is in this. I have had a number of things come up while this has been in the planning stages, that has tried to get me to forget this. The most recent, this week, when my wife and I received, or my wife received the diagnosis from the doctor that neither of us was pleased with. But I'm here to tell you that that diagnosis has given us a greater a, a sense of responsibility to move forward with this. Because if we don't try, we'll never succeed. If it doesn't succeed, at least we tried. If it helps one person, then it has been a success. Now, I hope it helps a lot more than one person. But with this program, you can't make a person stay. It is Christ-centered. And no matter where they go with Hope Center, it's Christ-centered. My wife and I have been associated with Hope Center Ministries for close to two years now, and I've seen a number 
of people be able to turn their lives around. Now, I've also seen people that don't even stay the full time, and that's the same chance that we're taking with sponsoring someone, is that they may not stay the full time. But my goodness, if one person goes and they are successful, then we've done our duty. And that's one person that will have turned their life around. That's one family that can get their life back together again. Oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? And like I said, I hope it's much more than that. I hope we can, that this program will grow so large that, that we have to employ someone to, to help with this process. But one step at the time, the first step is to get it going. If you're out there listening and, and you have a loved one that's suffering from addiction and you haven't been able to get them to uh, a, a resource center because they're not willing to go or because you don't have the funding, then that's what we're trying to be here for, for the ones that don't have funding but need help and won't help. And I just pray that God will bless this and that we can try to make a difference in our community. So on to today's message of not giving up. You know, when we have a loved one in addiction, you just feel so helpless at times. You just feel like you can't keep going. You have exhausted all your means. It doesn't seem to be getting you anywhere. Well, you know, sometimes when you have a family member in addiction, you have to separate yourself somewhat from your loved one. That doesn't mean that everybody has to separate themselves from your loved one. You see, there are still people out there that cares about everyone. There's people that cares about you as a family suffering. But you've got to reach out for help. You've got to find some trusted person that you can divulge what you have going on and that you can discuss the problems with. If you need a church, then we're here at Grace Ministries. We would love to have you. We have a Tuesday night addiction meeting. And also after the meeting at about 730, we break up into groups. And one of our groups is family support. And it's so encouraging to hear other people talk about their successes. I've also heard people talk about where the outcome wasn't what they wanted. But they're still leaning on God. And they want the rest of their family to lean on God. And I'm here to tell you today that God can help alleviate the burden that you feel. See, there's scripture in Matthew, Matthew uh, chapter 11, verses, uh, let's see, verses uh, 28 through 30, I believe it is. It says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So you see, the message that we're receiving there is turn to God. He will take that burden off of you. Now, I can tell you that your burden will never subside altogether. Even if your loved one gets into recovery and, and is successful, for a long time, there's still going to be doubt in your mind. That's just human nature. It's human nature when your loved one goes into addiction to say, Lord, why me? Well, I can tell you why me, because the Lord is using you. He's using that loved one for the greater good of his kingdom. You see, God can use anyone. He can use the most or the most horrible drug addict in the world. He can use them to spread his world, not just his word, not as an addict, but as a recovered addict. You see, your loved one that may be suffering from addiction, they are still a person. They are still someone. Someone that needs support, whether they want it or not. Just knowing that someone is there to care for them 
means a lot. You know, here at Grace Ministries, we have a number of people that have suffered from addiction, and some may even still be in addiction. I don't know. That's not my call. My call is to let the people know that we are here. We support you. We don't support you if you're doing wrong, but we support you if you're trying. We will give you that pat on the back and say, good job. And you know, there may be times as a family that you can't do that because you've had to separate yourself to some degree. But that doesn't mean you have to give up. That doesn't mean you have to quit believing in Jesus Christ because that is the hope. You see, because Jesus died on the cross, we always have hope if we will just turn to Him. As the Scripture says, He can take that burden away from us. He can make that load feel light. He can make us or help us to have contentment in our heart. Contentment that we know things are going to be okay. Because we have to work on the person that we can control, which is ourself. We can't make our loved one do anything. We can't make them stop using drugs. If we could, we wouldn't have anyone on drugs. There's nobody that wants their loved one to be using drugs. But God gives us something called free will. The free will to make choices. We choose whether we want to follow Jesus Christ or not. We choose whether we want to turn our back on Jesus Christ. You know, y'all have heard me say, if you followed this for a while now, that, that my wife and I turned our backs on God. And it made life more difficult, in my, in, in my opinion. You see, this week, my wife and I received some kind of disturbing news. Uh, but yet, that disturbing news has been handled a different way. You see, rather than turning our backs and running away from God, we turn to the one that can help with the problem. The one that can heal the problem. And that's Jesus Christ. You know, we're trusting Jesus for a successful outcome. We have all reasons to believe that it will be. Uh, and we have no reason to believe it won't be. Because Jesus gives us a comfort. I see in my wife's eyes a hope. I see in my wife's heart the care to continue trying to care for other people. That's all we can do. Even if we don't have a loved one suffering from addiction, we should be there for the other person. I'm willing to bet you over 50% of the population, and in some places greater, where they've had family members suffering from addiction, or they may have suffered from addiction themselves. But if someone suffers from addiction, I want you to know your loved one or you can still be successful in this world. People may still judge you. We're not supposed to judge, but people do. <clears throat> but God, when you ask Him for forgiveness of whatever sin you have committed, He puts it in the back. He lets us move forward. And He forgives us. And that's the one that matters. It's Jesus Christ. Because if we believe in Him and we ask Him to forgive us of our sins, then we know whatever the outcome is on this earth, we have eternal life with Him in heaven. We have a home where there's many mansions. We have a home where the streets paved in gold. Now, I know we're not supposed to put uh, a monetary value on, on what we have. As human nature, you are to some point. If you go to the bank and try to make a loan, then to some degree, you've got to put a balance sheet together of your own personal finances. They're going to want to know what income you have, what expenses you have. 
and what your net disposable income is. And that's what will determine whether they make the loan to you or not. But you don't have to worry about that with Jesus Christ. You see, no matter what your debt is, no matter what you've done in the past, you don't have a debt ratio. You have the right to eternal heavenly bliss if you just believe in Him. If you've lost a loved one to addiction, oh, I don't know what that pain must feel like. I can imagine it's horrible. I've lost family members before. We've lost a nephew to addiction, but we've never lost anyone closer to, to us than that. And I know what my wife's sister felt when she went through that. Seeing the pain that she went through made us hurt. Made us hurt because we care for her. We don't want to see her hurt. Well, I want you to know that we care for you today. We don't want you to hurt. I can't stop you from hurting. I couldn't stop her from hurting. But I can still stand here and tell you about the word of Jesus Christ. And that we have hope in Him. No matter what choice our loved one may make, we can make the right choice. And we can have that heavenly bliss. You may say, well, why do I want to go to heaven if I can't be with my loved one? Well, I'm totally convinced, and this is just my opinion, but I'm totally convinced if we have a loved one that does not accept Jesus Christ, that when we get to heaven, there will be no remembrance of them. Remembrance of them. If it would, it would be too painful. And heaven is going to be nothing but glorious, gloriousness all the time. Can you imagine? I know I love going to the beach. I haven't been in several years, and it's my own fault. But I love going to the beach. And I love the view when you stand there on the shore and you look out in the depths of the ocean and you see that beautiful sunrise or sunset and you see those clouds. That's God's beauty. And the human mind cannot even comprehend how great heaven will be. We're told that in Scripture. So if we have something that the human mind can't comprehend, that we can have a right to, don't we want to make that our choice? If you are hurting and you're in pain, don't you want to make the choice to give that burden to Jesus Christ? Don't you want to let Him take that burden? Don't you want to let Him help you have contentment with this problem? No one else can give you that feeling. Other people can let you down. Your pastor can let you down. Your Sunday school teacher can let you down. I can let you down. But Jesus will never let us down. That's His Word. He promises us eternal life. Today, are you suffering with pain? Are you suffering with a member that is in addiction? Yes, you suffer too. The family member, I guess, has the, has the greatest problem. But you have a problem because you care for them, because you love them. You don't want to see them throw their lives away. But you can't stop it. All you can do is pray and ask Jesus to please stop that person. If your loved one wants to reach out to Jesus... He can give them that same forgiveness that He gives anyone else. No matter what they're seeing, He can forgive them of what they're doing. So there's hope. There's hope for you because you can give your burden to Jesus Christ. And you can ask Him, you can tell Him, Lord, I'm at the end of my rope. I just can't deal with this anymore. Please help me. And you know what? He will. It may not be the answer that you want. 
It may not be in the time period that you want to see it, but He will give you the contentment that you need to carry on. You know, there's so much uh, satisfaction in being with a loving church family or someone else that cares about you. And I'm going to say it again. If you're an addict out there and you're suffering from heroin or any drug for that matter, you still have someone that cares about you. And that's the people of this church. A lot of the people in our church have suffered from addiction themselves and they're in a recovery stage. And you know, I try my best to let them know that I care for them. In some cases, their families have, have had to turn their backs to a certain point. But if they are trying to live their, right, their life right now, I can support that person. I can let them know I care about them. And that's what this church is all about, letting people know that we care about them. Even the people that are suffering from addiction. You as a family, you may say, what else can I do? Well, as I've said before, and I've even said today, you can't control what someone else does, but you can control what you do. You can say, Jesus, I come to you today. You know I've got a burden greater than what I can do anything about. But Lord, I know you can. I know you can give me peace. I know you can give me contentment. I don't want to forget about my loved one. I want them to get well. Well, I'm not going to guarantee you Jesus can get your loved one well. He can if they will turn to Him. But again, it comes back to that free will and their choice. So will you use your free will today to say, Jesus, I'm at the end. Help me go forward. I give you my burden. I've done all I can do. That's not an easy phrase to say or easy words to say, but it's words that may be necessary for you to continue in your walk with Jesus in your life. You know, your life is important. Your loved one's life is important, but yours is too. You may have other family members that are not suffering with addiction and you need to be there for them. You need that burden to be lifted so you can be what you need to be for that other person. It's not the end of the world. I know it may feel like the end of the world, but Jesus loves us. There are people that love you. There may be people, if you already have a church, I'm sure there's people that love you no matter what. <laughs> they love your loved one, even though they may be suffering from addiction. So it's not hopeless. It's not the end of the world. We have a hope. We have a hope through Jesus Christ. We have a hope that we can spend eternal life. Well, we have more than a hope. We have the certainty that if we just accept Him and believe that He died for our sins, no matter what anyone else in our family has done, no matter what we've done in the past, we can have eternal life. I know I want to be with all my family when I get to heaven, but I want to get to heaven. If some of my family members don't make it and the remembrance of them is taken away from me, then heaven is where I want to be. I want to be that person that is happy all the time. I've made a choice. What choice will you make? Jesus is there for you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this time today. I hope that I have said something that helps someone to know that through you there is hope. That we are not hopeless, 
when we have you in our life. And if we don't have you in our life, there is hope if we turn to you. Jesus, you love us so much. You love us so much that you died on the cross for us that we could have eternal life. We don't know why we go through things in life, but we do. Can those things in life we go through make our testimony stronger for you? Yes. Will we use that for this? That's our free will choice. So Lord, I ask you, place a burden on someone's heart to let them know that you're there for them, that you care for everyone, no matter what their sin, no matter what their history. It's all forgotten. Families may have trouble forgetting or forgiving someone. Some people may not forgive ones that have done something wrong to them, but you do. Lord, that's love. That's love that only a parent can have. You are our Father. And you have proven your love to us. You died on the cross for us. So Lord, please, please give someone contentment in their heart that is suffering today. Give an addict the knowledge that you're there for them, that you love them, that you love everyone. And all these things I just ask in Jesus' name. Amen.